whole purpose of my session is, is just to provide you with something else that you can add to your island site that hopefully is not going to be, be ter terribly challenging. I'm, I'm hope hoping I'm going to keep it simple and straightforward. Uh, and the, the technique I'm going to use is something called embed code. Has anyone in here actually heard of embed code before? Yeah. One person. Okay, fantastic. Good. That's what I hear. Okay, so uh, before I get into the uh, proceedings, just a couple of bits of advertising. So the first thing is we have an OLT YouTube channel uh, and there's a range of different videos on here. I would encourage you to go and have a look, have a play. If, you're, if you use Google uh, in any sense or form, you can subscribe and then you can be contacted whenever there's new content added. So we have, uh, so for example, Teaching and Learning Week, we have some videos from last year's Teaching and Learning Week. We'll be adding videos of the sessions from this year's uh, Teaching and Learning Week. Uh, we also have some tutorials, uh, academics that have built subject introduction videos or any kind of video content that they might want to share with the wider Bond community. This is where they, they tend to host it. So if you have any videos you think you want to share with other people, we're, we, we're more than happy to um, help you put those videos together if you haven't already and then upload them as well. Uh, it's, it's really an opportunity to showcase anything that you're working on or share, share anything that you'd like or even if there's a tutorial missing that you think, oh, I'd really like a video that shows me how to do this, everyone keeps forgetting, that's the kind of thing we'd love to help you with. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we've got is the blended learning community. So this is similar to the iLearn uh, educator support. It's located inside iLearn. When you first log into iLearn, you probably notice this little button at the top which says blended learning. Okay, so this isn't specific to iLearn, this is really talking about technology and education in general and also a bit of pedagogy and planning and, and what's the difference between face-to-face -face and online. Uh, this actually came out of a, a subject which was developed for the law faculty last year. Uh, so Nick James approached us and he, and he asked us, I really want to help teach my academics what blended learning is about and what's involved. So we built a community which really showcased uh, some of the different things people were doing as well as what people could possibly do. So there's a bit in there on um, what tools you can use, a bit in there on like getting started, what is blended learning, what types of things would be involved. So if you have no real understanding of what it is, that's a great place to get a bit of a primer. Um, and there's, there's videos and activities and all sorts of different uh, resources in there. We've also tried to make it a little bit practical as well. There's a, some readings in there, some research on blended learning and what's effective and what's not so effective. Um, we've even got Linda courses. so. Uh, if you're one of those people you like learning on your own, you're happy to um, sit down and spend some time and work through um, something at your own pace. We found some Linda courses we think are useful uh, to do with technology enhanced learning and so you're welcome to basically just click the link, follow through, put in your bond, username, and password and you can access those courses anywhere you, you like at home <laughs> or wherever. Um, we've got a discussion forum that hasn't really been that active. I think it's possibly because everyone's so busy. But if you, if you do want to have a discussion with people, please feel free to use it. You can, or you can just email us if you have a question. Um, I think, oh, we've, we do have some internet links there, so they're resources that we have found useful or that other academics working with us have found useful. So example, one of the questions we get is, where do we get free images from? Where do we get audio from? We've got no idea where's a good place to get this or that. So anything like that we will put in there. So if there's something missing, please contact us and if we don't know where it is, we'll find it and we'll try and find a solution for you. Okay, so that's the advertising out of the way. Okay, so embed code. What is embed code? Basically, it allows you to place any web resource. So it could be a video, YouTube video, could be an image, could be a web page, could be like a PowerPoint presentation or the, or the online equivalent of a PowerPoint presentation, which would be like a Prezi or a SlideShare, that type of thing. Uh, it basically put, lets you put that on the page inside your online su subject. So it's different to just creating a HTML link. I think most people for a very long time now, um, you found this great, really cool uh, education tool that you'd like everyone to use. So you go and find the website, you create something on it, you copy the link and you paste it in your island subject and no one sees the link or they don't click on it because it doesn't look interesting. Okay, so the idea behind embed code is it actually put on the page so they can see it straight away and start interacting with it. Uh, so you, and you don't actually need to know anything about HTML code, even though it uses HTML code, to be able to use embed code because it's quite easy to use. Um, so why would you do this? So there's a couple of reasons why you might do this. The first thing is it creates a seamless user experience. People don't have to click on a link and go to YouTube. 
and if you've ever been to YouTube, you know at the end of a YouTube video, often it will like it's got advertising down the side, and then I'll play some other video, and then they'll suggest go watch this video of a cat. All of a sudden, you've lost your student. Okay, so the idea of um, embedding it inside your site is that they will finish watching the video or interacting with the content and they'll go on to the next reading or whatever the next bit of content you put in there for the subject. So it helps keep the students motivated and focused inside your subject, inside iLearn and not go somewhere else. So that's one key reason. Um, it can increase student engagement. A lot of iLearn sites can be really text heavy and a bit dry. If you throw some interesting web content in there, all of a sudden they've got something a little bit more exciting to look at, they're more likely to go looking through your subject, looking for what else you might have provided, which is interesting and exciting. Uh, you can add some interactivity and multimedia. So Janelle was talking before about, oh, you know, are we just going to have text and images? Well, let's make it a bit more engaging. Though. Let's have links. Let's have students do different things. So Embed Code allows you to do that. Uh, and the last one, you can create diverse and creative learning experiences. Uh, there was a, a talk this morning for those people who were there which was talking about Padlet. Padlet's a great example of something can be embedded inside an online subject. So your students could have this really great face-to-face -face experience where you have the Padlet up on the screen and they're all providing their answers to questions and talking about a conversation. And then you can actually put that inside the online subject. So they can use that as a resource that they can come back to for revision or whatever purpose um, you might like to use it for. Okay, um, so here's two examples. So uh, again, this um, design here, this is something that ILT came up with for our uh, community. If you're interested in iLearn banners or templates, you can, you're welcome to talk to Janae or Lauren about it. I've created a kind of stock standard one, which is basically just a Photoshop file. So if you know, if you know how to use Photoshop, I'm happy to give it to you. If you don't know how to use Photoshop and you just want something simple like that for your subject, please contact me. I'm happy to put the name of your subject in and send it to you and then you can use that inside your subject. Uh, so that's with the banner at the top. And then the two elements, so on the left you've just got a YouTube video. So instead of going to YouTube, it's actually just going to play on the page. Uh, and the one on the right is uh, Prezi. Has, has anyone used Prezi before or knows what Prezi is? Yeah. A couple of people. So basically it's like a slideshow program but you have a canvas and so you can kind of zoom around. A lot of people say it gives you motion sickness but I think that's uh, more to do with the uh, operator and the design rather than the, the um, tool. And this is just a kind of quick snapshot just to give you an idea. There's plenty of different things that you could put inside your island subject. It's really up to your imagination or your research uh, into what the possibilities are. Uh, I know a lot of academics will find a really cool tool and they'll be really keen to tell other people about it. So um, yeah, so definitely keep your ears open. If, if you're one of those people and you love playing with tools and you love seeing what's new, definitely have a conversation with us. I, I, like, I love playing in this space as well. Um, I've been an educator for you know, seven years at a high school and, and this is really what, what's happening in the high school space now. There's a lot of teachers love using education and technology tools. So I have a passion for it. If you're one of those people and you want to play this space and you want to um, share ideas, I'm definitely available to talk about what the possibilities are. Okay, so using embed code, I'll just show a few examples of different websites and then we'll, go, we'll walk through an example together, uh, a site called Quizlet. If you've already used Quizlet when I get to that point, I have a handout here which has got a range of other education tools. I um, actually went to the effort of testing all these because some of them, the embed code doesn't work. What I found was if the website uses Flash, it doesn't embed in iLearn very well. And you probably wouldn't want to use that anyway because it's not going to work on a mobile device. But most web tools now are migrating to HTML5, uh, which basically all that means is it will work on any mobile device. It doesn't have to have Adobe Flash installed. Yep. How do we know? Find it. Uh, how do you know? Uh, you can actually, if, if you're on, a, on your computer, if you right click wherever the element is on the page, it will actually tell you Adobe Flash. It will, it will have like a Adobe Flash menu and that's, how, that's the easiest way to know. So just right click on the page and if that doesn't come up then chances are it's HTML5. Um, and, then, and then ultimately do what I did. You, you copy it, you paste it, you test. Does it, does it show or not? Oh, it doesn't show. Okay, it's not going to work. Okay, but you can always still use it as a link. Um, it's just the embed, embedding objects is fantastic and we're going to go through it. Okay, so if, you, if you've already used that, you can see there's a list of tools I have tried that I know work. 
um, and a description of what they are and, and whether you have to pay for them. Most of them are free. Um, a lot of them have like a paid option if you really get keen. Uh, but for most people, you're not going to pay for to use these tools just to have something a little bit more exciting. Uh, and then obviously the URL. So that basically, it's a three-step process, which we'll, we'll go through it. You find a website which has got embed code. Uh, you customize it if you need to. And really, the only thing that I'm going to cover customizing it is how big is it going to appear on the page. That's all I'm going to customize. Okay, and then you copy that code and you put it inside your online subject. So that's, that's, that's really all you need to know how to do. Uh, so YouTube is an example. Uh, so down the bottom inside uh, YouTube, there's a little button underneath uh, which says share. And if you click on share, then this other menu comes up which says embed. Uh, and, and there's a couple of options in the YouTube um, playlist. One of them, one is, sorry, there's a couple of options inside the embed menu and one of them is share playlist. So sometimes you'll have a, you'll find a really good video series which is perfect for a subject you're teaching and they'll have a string of videos on a particular topic. Okay, you can actually embed all those videos so when they play it they can actually watch that video then when it finishes it'll go to the next one or they can look, look through the playlist and choose which video they want to watch. Um, so that's what that enables you to do. Uh, SlideShare, has anyone here used SlideShares before? Okay, SlideShare is basically the PowerPoint of the internet. Well, it's what I like to call it anyway. Um, there's just an amazing array of presentations on SlideShare on any topic you can think of. Uh, I think it was primarily business when it started. That, 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 that was what its focus is, has primarily been. But nowadays, it's, it's really got any, any particular topic. So you, if you find a presentation, maybe an uh, you know, academic professor or someone involved in an industry which you're talking about, you can actually grab their presentation and say, hey, look, someone you know, covered a presentation on the topic we're talking about this week. Here, you can go, you can go and um, watch it yourself. Uh, Prezi is the other one, which I've already covered. Um, it's really easy. There's just a little button at the bottom, which just says embed. Uh, Lynda.com. Uh, with Lynda.com, if it's a public video, and that just means uh, usually the first introductory video to any Lynda.com course will have the embed button there. And if you embed that in your subject, it will play the introduction video and then at the end it will say, if you want to do this course, click here and it will take, take the student to lynda.com and then they can type in their bond details and they can do the course. Um, the other way to do it, which is new, um, there's actually a tool inside iLearn. Okay, you have to turn it on. So you have to click down the bottom in the control panel in iLearn and you have to click on tool availability. And for every subject that you want to use it in, you have to turn it on first. And if you want to do that, please email, email me. I'm happy to send through some instructions. Uh, and basically what that, that will do is it'll actually put the lynda.com course inside your subject. And if students do that course and they finish it, it'll put it in Grade Center that they've completed that course. So if you might have a prerequisite, you need students to have decent Excel skills. You want them to complete this Excel course in lynda.com, preferably in the first week of semester. It's maybe four hours worth of video work or whatever it might be. You can actually add that to your online subject and make it, and, and actually check to see if students have actually done it or not. Um, so that, that's a new feature of iLearn. I haven't had a chance to have much of a play around with it, but I know that it, it is up and working. And again, Lauren can help you out with that too if, you, if you're interested in that. Uh, this is another website. I use this one a lot. This is if you have any website, it will automatically create a little in, a bit of embed code and you can put it inside your subject. It works really great with PDFs. So you find that great bit of research or reading that you want to share with students rather than just giving them a link to the PDF. You put the PDF inside the page, they can click on it, it goes full screen, they can click download it. It just makes it a little bit more interesting and, and they can kind of see what the PDF is before they've even clicked on it. Uh, but providing a visual representation of content is, makes it much, much more likely a student will click on it. Okay, links are easy. Everyone knows how to add a link to a document, but adding a pictorial version of it or something they can just immediately access, students are much more likely to respond to that. So that's a great site because it'll let you stick anything on the web. And uh, a lot of websites have actually worked with this uh, organisation. They've actually made custom... Uh, embed co content so it will actually like work really well. Okay, so we're going to um, actually use embed code. So you can use the existing site that you've actually got up inside Ireland if you want to. 
Okay, um, I think Jenna already mentioned about making sure you click on the show more button on the right hand side. Sorry, just one question. Yes. I'm in build content. And yes. I can see under mashups, it's got, and on create, it's yes. got uh, images, it's got YouTube, yes. etc., and it's got yep. Linda.com. Yes. Prezi and all of that, are they going to be added? to the mashups page? Or no, so, so the way that works, the way the mashups work is that has to be hand coded or like pre-built and populated inside Ireland. Okay. okay, so what it's actually doing is it's doing what we're doing, it's kind of going and finding the code and then and then adding it and then adding a style okay. to it. Right. So it's doing all that, that, that um, heavy lifting for you to make it a little bit easier. Uh, there's so many tools out there. It's possible that we could ask Lauren to try and put as many in, as possible in. If there's one you use a lot that a lot of people you know use, email and say, hey, is there any way we could add this inside the menu? And, and she can see what she can do. YouTube's the main one. Yeah, so YouTube is in there. Um, I think they've added Vimeo recently, which was one a lot of people complaining about. Um, with respect to Prezi, will it bring along the details? Prezi is behind it. Um, a, a login on the site. So yes. if I've created something, I actually have to log in to access. Yeah. Prezi. So embedding it, I, I just want to know that the students can actually access it without having to log in. Sure. As long as it's a public one, it will definitely work. I'm not sure if it's. It, it depends what. Be creating public content. Yeah. Anybody can see. So. Uh, you'd have to you'd have to test it and see. Yeah, they might have to log in to Prezi. All right, so yeah, so basically all you need to do is paste the embed code. I realize this is gonna look really confusing, but I'm gonna go through the process step by step in a minute. I'm just going through the, the overall idea. Um, so you find where on the page you wanna put it. Sometimes it's better just to put the embed code in first and then write your text around the outside. That could be easier for some people. Um, and then you basically update the page and it creates a yellow box. This is the only thing I don't like about Ireland, uh, is it, it creates a yellow box when you put the embed code in there. So you actually have to click on um, you know, save, you actually have to save the page and get it to reload the page for it to actually load the embedded content so you can see if it's, if it's worked properly. Okay, but it'll, it'll just put basically a, a yellow square where it's going to put the embed, embedded content. That is worth knowing. So if you're looking at, at customizing the embed code, the only thing you really need to know about is how big you want it to be, okay? Uh, and that, that's like, to a degree, it's a personal preference, but I would say most people, you wouldn't want it any wider than 900 pixels. Uh, and the height will depend on what the content is. But in the embed code, somewhere there will be the word width, and there will be the word height, and we'll, I'll go through that when we do the one in a minute. Uh, and you can actually customize that. So you can type whatever width you want and whatever height you want. And then when it displays the box inside the page, it will make it whatever ever, ever size you've actually made. Okay, that, that, that's probably the most complex thing about this whole process. Yep. Uh, can you then trial and error if you put in a number and it's, oh, it's a little bit short, just add a few on? Yeah, you can, you can, you can open up the page again, click edit, go, go find where it says width and height. And this is where the control F uh, that Janelle was talking about can be really handy because you can type in the word width and then we'll find that part of the code. What about aspect ratio? If you change the width, then you want to proportionally change the height. Yep. It depends on the content and the site. So if it's YouTube, it usually puts black borders above or black borders along the side to fit the box. Uh, if it's something like Prezi, Prezi does, is, a, is a canvas, so it just changes the window on that canvas. Uh, so it depends on what we, I think with SlideShare it tries to stretch it, I think. Yeah, so it depends, you, you really have to try and see, it depends on the content. Okay, so that, 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 that's, and so you can see there that that's where I, where the width and the height is, so if I wanted to change them, that's where I'd go looking. Okay, so we're going to go through an example of a site which does allow you to put embed code in. This is a site called Quizlet. How many people in here have heard of Quizlet or possibly used it? A couple of people. Okay, so what this website allows you to do is really good for terminology. So we're talking about lower, lower order thinking skills, beginning of the semester, perfect to throw a Quizlet in there, get the students to um, work out how much they can recall from the content already. Uh, so really you put your definitions in uh, and the terms, 
and it will do all sorts of wonderful things with it. It will make a little game out of it. It will make a quiz out of it. You can have leaderboards. You can actually um, pay money and get a, a fully fledged teacher account, add your students to it, and it will actually tell you what words students in your subject are struggling with so that you'll know next time you go in, to, uh, next week you go in, you need to cover that term again because they just don't get it. It's, they're still confused about it. So it's a very powerful tool um, and it's very easy to use. And the best thing about it, it's, it's free if all you want to do is just use the question bank and the gamified side of it. Um, but if you want to get into the more powerful features, if you really think it's a useful tool, you've got that option to pay, pay more money. So I've got a few um, examples there of, of what you can do with it. Uh, so you can put any list, so if you've already got a list of terms or a table in Word for your subject, it's going to be very easy to put that into Quizlet. You can just copy and paste it in, you're done. Um, there's a mobile version of it as well. Some of the features aren't there, um, but it's still really, really useful. So students can actually be on the go on the bus. They ha you have your Quizlet there and they can go through the, flick through the turns and, you know, while they're waiting for the, for the bus or whatever that might be. Um, if you pay, you can also do things like um, make your own custom audio so you can actually explain a term. You can put a video in or an image in that, that, that actually illustrates that term. Um, and obviously it's really easy to embed that into Ireland. So we're going to go to Quizlet. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is go to the Quizlet website. So the, the address is quizlet.com. Okay, um, if you've used the website before, you just click on the login. If you've never used it before, you can click on sign up, or if you're one of those people and you're not really worried about losing your privacy to Google, both, I kind of feel like Google kind of taking over everything these days, um, you can actually just sign in with your Google sign in, and it will pull that information across. So it's really straightforward, just put, put your um, details in, so I'll give everyone a few moments to do that. Okay, so if you're already in there and you're just wondering what you can do with this, um, one of the things you can do, one of the really powerful things about Quizlet is you can actually search for any kind of term bank and someone out there on the internet has probably already made one which is very close to your subject okay, or something that you could use to start with. So here I might look up uh, business, to, uh, business. Okay, so you can see what it's actually uh, found is a range of other teachers out there who've actually already made term banks associated with that topic. Now obviously business is really generic, but if you type in something very specific, like a particular uh, type of uh, medical anatomy or, uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but any, any kind of detailed subject matter, chances are someone would have already created a Quizlet that you can either use or you can adapt and modify. So you can actually start with what someone else has done and make it your own, or you can start from scratch with your own list of terms. It's completely up to you. It's quite flexible, and that's what I like about it. It's very quick to create a list. Um, so this one's got 76 terms in, which is a lot to remember, so I'm gonna start with that. So if you click on it, it actually opens it up. Okay, so if you want to find something related to your topic, it doesn't really matter what term bank that you've found. Uh, and you can see along the top, uh, there's several study modes. So the first one is flashcards. If, you're not, if you've never seen flashcards before, they're quite old school where they used to put the definition on one, page, one uh, part of a piece of paper on the, other, the reverse side that have the definition. Uh, they often use it a lot in primary school, but a lot of language teachers use it as well. Um, the idea was you had to look at the word and work out what the definition was and then flip it over and see if you're right. So that's basically how that works. Uh, the second one is learn. So I'll, I'll just show you what it looks like. So flashcards is really straightforward. So you, you have the term, you click over, it's got the definition. It will also read it for you if you like. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, it's actually really great for international students. It's got a, a, a speech, text-to-speech recognition engine built in and it does quite a good job. It might struggle with some terms, but if you have a paid account, you can actually record your own voice. And that, that could be really personalized. Oh, gee, my lecturer is telling me what the definitions of these terms are using their voice. So if you want to go that way. And it's actually, I think it's quite cheap. 
as well. I think it's a hundred dollars a year or something for the paid version. So it's not twenty five. Twenty five. Oh, they've reduced it. Okay, twenty five. So it's really cheap. Probably forty. Yeah. So if you click on learn, so over here it's giving me the definition. I need to know what the answer is. If, if I don't know what the answer is, uh, it'll tell me what the correct answer is, and then it's asking me to actually type it in. Okay. And then over here it's telling me oh, I've got that one incorrect. And it's smart, it'll work out, okay, well I'm going to re-ask that question soon and see if that person's remembered it. Okay, and if you type it in right. So this is a great way for students to work through their terms at their own pace and try and work out what they know and what they don't know. Uh, the next one is speller, which is obviously about how do you spell the term. So it will actually, probably can't hear it because this, uh, the audio is not hooked up on this laptop, but it actually will say the term. Okay, and then, you've, and then it gives you the definition and then you've got to type it in. Again, really good for international students that might struggle with language. Uh, the test, it actually automatically creates a quiz based on your terms. You don't have to go and, and do any heavy lifting here. It's automatically grabbing the terms, grabbing the definitions and putting to, and making a little quiz. And over the, on the right hand side you can choose what questions you want included. So you can choose whether you want a written question, a uh, matching question where they've got to match up the term and the definition, uh, multiple choice, true, false, so you've got a lot of options there. Okay, and students can kind of do this on their own. You can even click print test and take it with you to a face-to-face -face class. Okay, let's do a pop quiz. Okay, let's see who, who remembers the terms from last week. Uh, and you can see, you can see all the different things. So that, 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 I think that's a really powerful feature. Uh, and it's free, it's included. Okay, up the um, last two are Scatter and Race. So these are two games and they create leaderboards and students can compete with each other and those students in your class are really competitive, uh, might get quite addicted to these. So Scatter will basically put the, the, the uh, term and the definition all over the place and you've got to find the definition, find the term and match them up. And when you match them up they'll just dis disappear. Okay, so you match it up and it term disappears. So the idea is how quickly can you get can you find all the terms and definitions, match them up before the, the um, you know, in the fastest time. And then at the end it'll give you like a little leaderboard, who's got the fastest time. So that's a bit of fun. Race is similar in the sense it's it's got a leaderboard, it's got scores. You get uh, I think it's two or three lives. Uh, and the definition goes across the screen and they've got to type in what the um, sorry the yeah, they've got to type the term in the box at the bottom before it gets to the other side. If it gets to the other side, it tells you what the answer is. You lose a life and it gets you to type it in. Okay, so there's a lot of pedagogy behind the design of this website. They, they, it understands that students are going to get things wrong, but rather than just saying, hey, you got it wrong, it's going to say, hey, you got it wrong, write the right answer in. Okay, and by the, actually going through that cognitive process, I need to type the right answer in it's far more likely a student's going to retain that element that they, that they didn't, didn't get the first time. Okay, so that's, that's basically um, how the Quizlet website works. Does anyone have any questions about that or anything which was really confusing or unclear? I, I think it's a reasonably self-explanatory um, website. And you can see over here, it's telling me, it's, it's giving me feedback. So it gives your students feedback immediately. These are the terms you don't get. These are the ones you need to study and, and remember. Okay. So if I want to actually provide this uh, business uh, Quizlet uh, to my class, it's really easy. What you need to do is, you, if you look over on the far right hand side, there's a button there that says more. So all I need to do is click on more and you can see there's some different options there. There's one called combine. You can actually grab a whole ton of different term banks and put them all together. So you can make one for each week and then make a combined one for the end of semester for a revision for the exam or whatever it might be. So it's quite flexible. Uh, really all we want to click, click on there is the embed. Oh, you can export it too if you want to print it out or put it in a Word document or whatever it might be. So you click on embed and it pops up with this uh, embed study mode. So you can choose which, which mode you want to provide to the students. So you can just give them the flashcards if you want. You can give them the, um, 
the loan mode, the scatter mode, spell test, whatever you think might be appropriate. And they can actually change that as well once it's embedded so they can choose what they want. So say for example, I, I really like, um, I want my students to learn these terms, it's week one and I know they won't know any of them. I might select the embed code which is included in here. I'm just going to copy and paste that. Okay, I'm going to open up Notepad so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see what it's done is it's created this bit of code here. Okay, iframe is actually just a bit of HTML code that tells iLane stick this in a box somewhere on the page. Where it's got um, height and width, that's telling it how big to make it. So what it's doing there is it's making the height 410 pixels wide and it's making the width however wide the iLearn page is. So you could actually type in, um, say, I want it 800 pixels wide or however big you want it. Okay? I'm just going to leave it as is, but so just so you're aware, if you want to change the size of the box, that's all you need to do. So I've copied that code, I'm going to come into iLearn. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on build content. Computer oh. struggling today. Okay, uh, build content. I'm just going to create an item. You can probably you can actually probably put it on a um, blank page as well. Um, but I'm just going to I'm just going to create a new item for it just because I like the look look of an item. Okay, so you give it a name. So um, mine will be business Quizlet. Okay, and then making sure you're, uh, you can see the full uh, editor. I'm basically going to click on the HTML button, similar to the way we did before. And I'm just going to paste the embed code straight in there. So I'm just going to hit Control V. If you're not a hotkey person, you can actually just go paste, right click and just choose paste. Okay, and that's going to put that code in there. Then I'm just going to click on update and you can see it's made it fit the width, if you can't let's see what it's doing there. So that's going to be quite large on the page. Okay, and if I click on submit, it'll actually load that content and you can see what it's going to look like. So I realize it's going to be right at the bottom of the page. Okay, so you can see it's made it fit the width, it's made it 400 pixels high. So this is what students are going to see when they log into the subject now. They can actually change the, the mode over there, what game. So they can, once they get a feel for it, the students that like clicking will find that pretty quickly. And then they'll start competing with each other who's, who knows the, next, the most terms in the subject. So it's really good for those lower order thinking skills. Uh, you know, subjects like law where you've got so many terms to get through and there's just not enough time in class to do it. Students can do this at their own pace and there's, there's a bit of, incentive for them to work at that. They, they get some feedback from it. They, they're getting the feedback of what terms they know, what they don't know, how they're faring uh, compared to other students in the class. Uh, and, and for international students, it's got the benefit of, of actually being able to play audio back. And that can be a real barrier for many students. They might be okay with the spoken word, but not so great with the, the text or vice versa. And so it can be a really powerful way for them to enhance their language skills while learning your subject. Are there any questions on embedding that? Just yep. one. So, embedded and everything, but when they're doing the quizzes, like when I did one, yep. it came up with, okay, this is where you rate it to these other people. Yep. So, if, if you're choosing someone else's, not one you've made, yep. does that then take them out of the class and compare them against other people who've done it? or is it? No, no. What you would do is you would set it up. If you have a paid version of Quizlet, you would actually, create, you would actually link your student accounts to your class so that when they actually create their Quizlet account you give them a class code and then they're part of your class only and they're only competing with students in your class okay, okay. if they if they want to create their own if sign up to other people's classes they can do that but but the way you would set it up is they put in a code when they create their Quizlet account it links to your class and then when they go through Quizlet they're competing against only students in your class okay. and, and you will get the feedback how are they doing if you have a paid account okay so it's a matter of how far you want to go you can, you can just do this. 
and then and then the students can do what they want with it and you can get some feedback from them is this useful would you like to use this next semester or you might decide that you really like this tool it's going to really fit with what you're doing and you might go for a full on paid account and and, and use all of those features and actually make it part of the assessment okay everyone's got to get complete quizlet to x point or you need to whatever you need to do it's time out to you so that's really how embed code works uh, so some of the things you can do, which, which I haven't covered, is, is you can actually, when you're adding the terms, you can actually type in the terms you have and, and Quizlet actually goes and finds all the other terms that other educators have entered, so you can actually grab someone else's definition and add it, so you don't even have to write your own definition if you don't want to. Um, you can import a list of terms, so if you have it already in its spreadsheet, you can just bring it straight in and it will just populate it for you. Um, you can choose a language if you're doing language teaching you can change the language or maybe depending on your subject and your students maybe there might be a point in actually having a second language so that those students from a different language can actually go through the terms and, and, and pick up those words that they're going to struggle with you could go to the effort of creating that that bank for them if, if you think that would be useful uh, any obviously you can just manually add your own terms so this is when this is the create screen basically of Quizlet. Yep. Chris, when you add students to a class, you have to invite them by email. Yes. There's no other way. You can't force them. You can give them a class code and then they can sign up. And when they create their account, they can type the class code in. Right. Yeah. That that's the way that I usually would do it. Okay. Yeah. You say they get to give them a class code. Yes. Right. Yep. Thanks. Uh, what else have we got? Um, so I've already covered the study games where the embed code is. Um, you can actually access the scores yourself. Um, so I'll do I'll do an example. Of, so uh, we we did one on blending learning te uh, terminology. Um, so those people who actually have have completed that who had a Quizlet account, it's given. <laughs> It's giving me like this little gamified trophy system of who the top uh, people are um, in each of the different uh, games, if you like. So you can see the ones which they have done, which ones they haven't. So yeah, so that, that, that can just just add a little bit of fun. Um, I suppose you could create an announcement, get them get really get them competitive. Okay, who's going to win this week? Um, oh, chocolate. <laughs> chocolate this <laughs> week, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, getting students to memorize terms can be really dry and really challenging. So I think something a tool like this can be really useful. Okay, um, so want more ideas? Uh, this website has got a list of different tools. Not all of them are going to work because some of them are using Flash, but they've got some examples, and some of them are probably more um, high school slash primary school based. But they they show you like what the tool does. And so some of these tools can actually be used in a higher education environment. It's really about thinking outside the box what you could do with the tool. Uh, so I'll show you some examples of uh, what they look like when you embed them. So, uh, so which ones are good? Okay, so I've got Khan Academy, which is that one there. Um, if you don't know what Khan Academy is, it's, uh, it's, it's quite big now. It's a bit of an institution. Basically, Bill Gates helped... Uh, throw an awful lot of money at this gentleman and he, he started off by just creating like a uh, they call it whiteboard animation where he's just basically drawing with the tablet on a screen explaining how to do maths he started doing that for his cousin his cousin said why don't you do this on the internet you know and give it give it away to other people so that's basically how he started and now he's got hundreds of different educators every topic from uh, you know from primary school up until like senior math or into university uh, level uh, concepts and they're just great little videos that students can watch and, and they explain concepts really clearly uh, so you can actually embed one one of the things I like about Khan Academy is they can change the speed of the video so if it's a fast learner they can speed it up if they're really struggling with a concept they can slow it down um, and it actually supports a whole range of different subtitles as well it's built in that it actually includes multiple languages so they can just listen to it in English but but read it in a different language if they're struggling to understand the, the English. Uh, so that's one. Uh, Vocky is another one. Vocky is another one. Uh, Vocky is like a little animation that um, 
you type in some text, it does a text-to-speech thing, or you can record your own voice, uh, and it's like a little avatar that kind of speaks. So it's, it's kind of gimmicky and cute, but I know some academics at Bond use it that the international students love it uh, because it's, it's personalised and it looks cute. So it's just something a little bit different. <coughs> so that's a, that's a, a blocky. Uh, audio Boom, you can actually uh, create your own audio recording and add pictures to it and then it'll actually just play it back and students can respond to that. Uh, voice Thread, that's a paid one. That's kind of a little bit like a Camtasia. So you can have audio attached to it, but you can add other, other documents and elements to it as well. Uh, so that, that's one that uh, I know some educators use. That one is higher ed focused. It was built for higher education, that tool. Uh, Google Forms is free. Uh, anytime you want data from your students and you want to put it in, say, an Excel spreadsheet, you might want to find out when are they available or um, what do they think about a particular topic or a range of questions. You can actually create a Google form really easy and then it just puts it inside iLearn and when they finish filling it in, at the other end it comes up and it actually gives it to you in, in a form you can create charts from it or download the data as a Excel CSV file and do whatever you want with it. So that's, that's a really powerful tool and that's, that's relatively recent Google Forms. Uh, Poll Daddy, this is just a way of, it's kind of like the iLearn test tool I suppose. Uh, but you can add videos and other elements to it. So if you want to um, yeah, basically quiz your students on something, uh, and you can actually have the right uh, answer. So if they put the right question in, it tells them whether they got it right or not. With a free version, it advertises at the end. Paid version doesn't do that. You can do other things. Uh, so this is a Padlet. Just put straight in. Um, so these are just, I think that's just like a, that's a PDF and that's just an image. So with a Padlet you can put images, videos, text. You can record some audio and put it on the page. Students can move it around, add their elements to it. And you can just put that straight inside your subject. Uh, Storify. It's kind of like a mashup tool. So you can have videos, image, audio, text just typing information in and it, and it basically just creates like a little presentation out of it. So you can put videos in it as well, all that kind of thing. Definitions, tweets, Facebook posts, if you want to go that way. Haiku Deck, it's kind of like PowerPoint. Does anyone use Haiku Deck? A couple of people. What it does is it takes all the design and work out of it for you. You put in some text, you choose an image related to that and it puts the presentation together for you. I know a few academics are using that because it's so much easier than, than trying to figure out how to design something in PowerPoint. Uh, this is Scrib. So Scrib is like an online ebook platform, but they do allow you to create your own account and upload your own documents to it. You can even share them with others if you want to. So you could publish put papers on there if you wanted to. Uh, and then you can share it and it actually creates so this lovely, elegant little viewer. So this is just basically a Word document, but it looks a bit more interesting on the page than please download this Word document. And they can scroll through it. Um, they can zoom in and out, see it full screen, straight inside the island page. Uh, this is Mind Map. This is a free mind mapping software. It's open source. Uh, so you can create your own mind map and it will just put it on the page. So um, that, that, that might be useful for some subjects where you're doing a lot of diagramming or processing. That's, that's pretty much all I've got there that I had to play around with. So there's hundreds of different things you could add. I, I don't have enough time to go through them all. Uh, th this list really is just to show you what's possible. And I'm not, I know a lot of people can be feeling really overwhelmed by giving a hundred different options. But if there's something there that, that did interest you uh, and you want to know more about it, please contact us. We're happy to, to, to walk you through the pros and cons of anything that we, we find useful. Uh, and we're pretty much out of time.